It's Monday, what did I just say? The 26th? 26th. March 26th. We're on our way back from Rep Rap Festival. Uh, we saw a bunch of cool stuff, and now we're here driving down the road. And, and, and it's snowing. Everything is, well, I guess it's not completely covered in snow, but. We're from Texas. This is a lot of snow for us. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a lot of snow for us. From Texas, I, I, I but also you gotta you gotta keep in mind we just drove through here like two days ago and this was all you know no snow and we didn't see any kind of crazy weather up there where we were at but now everything is covered in snow here so it's kind of neat uh, but anyway what was your favorite whoa what was your favorite thing from the show Shane oh well, you know I'm definitely impressed with the uh, CBC and C uh, giant Delta runner. Definitely impressive. I think mean, it's like 20 foot tall. I don't know how tall it is. Sure, I, I, are you sure? I thought it was taller than 20. I don't know. It makes a tower, yeah, the, man. The thing was pretty big. The thing was pretty big. It, we, we got we got plenty of video of it going too. So oh, I mean, yeah. They had the uh, three printed angel, some really cool looking bases. Uh, somebody said they were using a six millimeter nozzle. Print with. It's pretty cool. Uh, the the uh, the print of the angel. They told. They said it took 36 hours to print. That means like, what was that? It was like. Uh, it was. It was a good. Tall, it was. Foot. It was about a head taller than I was. Yeah. Yeah. I say a little bit over six foot tall, maybe. And it took 36 hours. That was, was pretty it impressive. Was pretty cool. Yeah, I did have a giant nozzle on that thing. All right. <laughs> I thought it had a pellet. It did have a pellet extruder, didn't it? I have no idea. Oh, man. Uh, it, oh. uh, you would think as, as big as the the entire yeah, yeah. head was. Yeah, it was a pellet extruder. I, I kept thinking maybe it has some counterweights, right? And uh, they kind of look like dumbbells. They kind of look like giant filament rolls. I, I don't know, for some reason, I, every time I looked at the printer, I, I thought those counterweights were rolls of filament. Uh, that's why I need to get glasses again. Yeah, yeah, you, you definitely need to get your glasses, Shane. We, we need to either 3D print you some pair, or, or you should go get some glasses. You, you know, you know, we have I to think, 3D print them. I think yeah. one of my favorite things was over there in the very back corner, uh, and maybe I know I got video of it, so maybe we can clip some of that video in with this video. But uh, that little robot arm printer that was printing on the table, was using the surface of the table as the print surface, and they had it printing on the table. I thought that was that was pretty neat. Uh, there were there were a couple of nifty little little printers like that that I saw, and then the guy that hit with the copper, bronze, and oh, uh, yeah, stainless man. filament. Yeah, that guy was We good. gotta get some of that stuff. Uh, yeah. Watch out for Popo. You can get over here. I mean, definitely as a machine shop, I mean, we definitely need to uh, venture off to uh, 3D printing uh, metal. Absolutely. I, I can't believe we haven't done it yet. I actually, actually have some of the uh, Proto Pasta stainless steel uh, PLA. Sweet. Just haven't used it yet. Um, dude, what I liked was. Uh, uh, open RC cars. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> those are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind playing with one of those. I mean, especially since we got a partnership with uh, our show RC racing products. We really need to uh, get money set up on uh, 3 printing cars. Yeah. It, it, it looks like that's going to be huge. I mean, 3D printing is starting to take off more and more. You know, the printers are getting better. The, the filament materials are getting better. So, uh, definitely 3D printed RC cars and like drones and stuff. Dude, that's going to just... I mean, this is just the beginning, you know. Especially when you start incorporating, uh, like, carbon fiber uh, filament. Yeah. We might need to we might need to get a kiln if we're gonna start doing the carbon fiber. Oh yeah, yeah. Or the the metal too. Uh, I mean, he had some that were polished. He 
it's something he fired, but they both look pretty cool. We need, we need definitely to play with that. What else was awesome? That little, that little lathe thing. I forgot what it was called. I missed that. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have to look that, that up. I don't remember. I mean, surely I got some video of it. I don't know if I got a very much video of it. We'll, we'll see. I'll see if we have to clip that in. Uh, that thing was pretty neat, and find out what it was actually called because. I couldn't tell you right now. Uh, no, we we definitely need to go through, and we've got a list of shout-outs that we need to do for a lot of the people that were there. There were a lot of really cool stuff. There were a lot of really cool people, and I don't want to start doing it now when I don't have enough information and leave people out. But uh, we, we definitely got to get one of those videos up because it was a blast. Uh, it was a whole That show was a whole lot of fun. Uh, all the people were awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. We've had too much fun on this trip. <laughs> it was, yeah. The, the, uh, be able to see the E3D uh, tool changing uh, gantry. That one was definitely. That, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was awesome. cool. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a glimpse to like, the future. You know, where everything's going. A lot of these FDU based printers. Um, no, we, I need to go look and find the rest of that video online that people posted because I missed the, the end of that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Tom's gonna have. I mean, Tom was. No, I, I talked. I talked to him. He said they were they were gonna have it bit up on YouTube in a couple of days or so. Yeah, it's probably new. So, yeah. dude, E3D is really man. They're really starting to like every time I turn around, they come out with something new. It's like man. Speaking of hot ends, um, uh, Slice Engineering with their new hot end, and it, it, it got it up to like uh, 450 degrees Celsius for the hot end. Uh, the cool thing is their, their heat break was pretty neat. They use they had a copper heat block. I mean, the I mean, E3D also has a copper heat block. But, uh, they had some buttery components that just the geometry and materials they used. Uh, you just see the work. They, they had the heat simulation of the hot end, like in real time. Uh, yeah, with the, the heat camera? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was nifty. That, that one was really cool. Uh, I don't know if we got any video for that. Uh, I was I'm not sure if I did or not. We're definitely going to get one. They sold out. They, well, they actually just launched. That was the first batch of hot ends they had manufactured. Like their, I mean, it's a new product. That was their debut. But uh, they they sold out, so we're probably gonna have to wait a little bit. But hopefully, it's not too long. Hopefully, we can get a hot in the next four weeks. I'm sure it'll take them a little while to, you know, they gotta amp up production. But that's a pretty solid product. Their, their heater cartridges were really nice. They were uh, handmade in Japan. Uh, it's the only ones like it. Uh, very accurate heat cartridge. It, it kind of reminds me. They're kind of doing the same thing on the lines of what Pico is doing with the, the high temperature hot ends. Besides, uh, their heat break was a lot different. Like the heat just stopped the transfer from uh, the hot end to the cold end, and. Uh, I really want to try that out and see how it performs. You know, I saw I saw a couple of pretty nifty uh, water cool systems too for uh, like the enclosed printers. Oh yeah, they, they have the enclosed heated the area. Oh, um, the yeah, I saw a really neat extruder. I want to try out. It's a uh, it's like a direct drive hybrid, basically. It, it's a direct drive extruder, but it uses like this long spring cord vein to, uh, so, so you don't have to have the motor on the gantry itself. You know, the motor is just on the printer, like the base of the frame. And uh, so, so it removes all the weight from the gantry. So basically you get the benefits of having a, dude, I can kind of see out here. I know, it's getting, it's getting foggier and foggier here. Get his right lane. 
Like, like earlier, you could see way out there and all the snow and everything. And I think we're getting, we're just getting deeper and deeper into into whatever this weather we're coming through. I was, I was hoping we'd have been out of it a while ago. Right, right, right. It looks like we're driving into it. Yeah. I, thought, I was hoping we were just going to pass through, but yeah, it doesn't look like that's happening. Hopefully we'll at least get through it before nightfall. We still got, what, another uh, 15 hours of driving? We still have 14 hours and 48 minutes of drive time. Sounds about right. So... We're not supposed to get back to Houston until about 10 a.m. and it is about 7 right now. <coughs> it's gonna be a fun day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 